But that's, I'm pretty sure, I don't read the paper, but I'm pretty sure that's what the headline was. I saw the word recovery, signs of recovery, seeds of recovery, green shoots of recovery, or whatever. You know, do you want alfalfa boost in your whatever? Um, by the way, here's, it's totally bizarre. So I, I literally, I don't read the paper. I never buy the paper. I don't even read it online. It's just, you know, I have the data. Why would I read it in the paper? So, um, but the other day, like two Sundays ago, I can't even remember why, I actually went down to 7-Eleven and I bought a Sunday paper. So I bring it home and you know how the Sunday paper is. It's like full of trash. I mean, it's just all kind of inserts and all this, you know, stuff. You know, who reads that stuff, right? So I'm like pulling things out, pulling things out, pulling things out. And one section kind of opens up and right there, okay, I never read the paper, all right? Right there on the front is the obituary page and a story about Paul Brubaker, <laughs> who just passed away. Do you know this guy? There, there was another, there was another Paul Brubaker living on the move for the last 30 years. I, I, I kid you not. And I wonder what his life was like. I never met him, but I talked to his wife a lot because she would call me up occasionally and say, hey, we got a phone call, and I would, you know, and I would call her, hey, somebody called my house. They wanted the other Paul. Um, he was a chartered a CPCU, right? Chartered property casualty underwriter. Um, and I would speak to the, you know, they have their professional organization, the Society of CPCU. You know, every few years they would invite me to come speak at one of their professional lunches. And in all those years, I never met him because for some reason he was never there when I was there. So I know all the guys in his industry, right? And I never met him anyway. That's a bizarre experience. But, um, so my point is, you know. When you read the paper, I mean, um, you know, maybe you're dead, but uh, <laughs> either way, um, you have to really do the filtering thing. And I remember seeing something in the paper, you know, passing on the, the, on the newsstand or something. So I don't think we're there yet, but I, it's, it's interesting as I look at the condo side, you know, the number is starting to look like it's 300,000 and, you know, dollar 380 or something. It's like, 300 and change. I'm just starting to get that feel. So I'm thinking the right number. Um, so I'm going to say for Oahu, it's five, for a single family, it's 545. Now we actually published 540 on, if you Google U Hero, I collaborate on the University of Hawaii forecast, and um, we published 540. But then I think we published something for next year, like 528. So anyway, it's and it's I don't know what it is right now. It's about five fifty on a season adjusted basis right now. Five fifty, five sixty. So it's it's got a little ways to go. So well, for Congress, yeah, three hundred. I'm pretty sure that's looking to me like the number's three hundred something. I'm guessing it's not gonna be two sixty. It's like if when you get under three hundred not if you know Location, location, location. But I'm saying at the median, it's looking like that's a number where you get under that number and people start buying it up, bidding it up, or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, here's that. Uh, here's the long-term comparison. So, you know, just to kind of wrap things up on this discussion, then we can turn to Q and A. I mean, it's an interesting and open question. You know, does Hawaii end up? Does Oahu end up? I mean, in the long run, should Oahu trade at a premium to Orange County? Yes. Yeah. I see more people going like this than I see people going like this. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it makes sense to me. But of course, we we voted with our people. Everybody in Orange County is like, no. <laughs> right? So I don't know. Uh, there have been two interesting episodes in the early 80s and then, of course, the 90s. Um, you know, where we ended up higher, and that's only because I only have this much data. Uh, we ended up higher, and um, like a lot higher in the early 90s. Again, these are log scales. This, is, because it's a log scale, the slope is a constant percent change. So this tells you, it tells me, in the long run, a house should appreciate at the risk-free rate of return. You know, 
that the total return on a house, which is the capital gain, that's what this is, plus the dividend, which is you get to live in the house, the total return should be the risk-free rate plus the risk premium. And the risk-free rate is probably 4.5. Okay, so you should at least get a total return. You know, you might not get appreciation, but you get to live in the house. The housing services are the dividend. Do whatever that math is. So I'm not one of these people that thinks that home prices should not have gone up, will never go up. You know, you, these guys are out there, right? There's this guy, Dave Rosenberg, he used to be at Merrill Lynch. A lot of kids that did. And he's on his own. All of us are on our own now. So we're all spanky communists. And um, I saw him on CNBC this morning, and he's like, oh, yeah, dude, this is like a secular, uh, this is a secular bear market. I'm like, don't shoot yourself with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. And then, uh, you know, Robert Schiller, of the case Schiller, right? Go read Irrational Exuberance, Schiller's book. And he basically asserts in the new edition of the book, which has a whole chapter on housing bubbles, um, he asserts that there's no reason to believe home prices should go up. And I'm like, there's a, I mean, if they didn't, why would you own one when you could rent? What would be the point? So, but then, you know, Robert Schiller is a professor at Yale, and Paul Verdigger's not, so there you go with that comparison. Um, anyway, pretty massive correction in California, and if those of you in the room who agree that a walking should, on average, trade at a premium to Orange County are correct, then the alignment we'll end up in is not unlike something you know, along those lines, proportionately. <laughs> I can tell you for sure that when the Wahoo trades at a discount, all the Fornians come over here and buy property. Um, and here's another. Oh, here, that, this is that comparison I was just telling you about. So, yeah, it's it's right about here. It's like that quarter right there. Or something like that. You know, plus or minus. I mean, it's like really, really tight. Um... By the way, it's important, so thinking about where we go for the next couple of years, is it, it's important to remember that what people generally think is almost always wrong <laughs> <laughs> if you compare it to the data. So, for example, in 1998, people generally thought Hawaii was in the crapper, and, you know, at the very moment you should have been buying Maui, in 1990, at the end of 1998, everybody was sure that Hawaii was toast. I'll give you an example. In 1990, in in the spring of 1999, the winter of uh, the fall of 98, winter of 99, I was told I was in the process of downsizing. Bank of Hawaii used to have an economics department. I had 10 people in the department. I had a $200,000 printing budget, and right here. They retired my boss and said, okay, you're in charge. Finish, you know, finish downsizing this department. They retired three of the ten people, early retired. And so I had to get rid of everybody and then myself. <laughs> and at this moment, right here, they said, we're not going to publish the, the annual construction report anymore, which Bank of Hawaii had published for like 30 years. We're not going to publish the annual construction <laughs> report. Not because it costs money, because by then... I'm doing all, I was doing all the desktop publishing and we post a PDF to the website. So printing a publication expense, gone. Right off the top, say $200,000 a year. And by the way, our printer, Edward Enterprises, is a real quality shop and I recommend them to you. They're, a, they're just a beautiful work. They tell us we're not going to publish a construction report anymore because Hawaii will never recover. <laughs> I sat in a meeting with a vice chairman of Bank of Hawaii, so, you know, my direct report, sat in his office and he told me to my face that Hawaii would never recover from the 1990s thing. There will never be, uh, you know, right here, it says our strategy is based on the assumption that there is no upside. Wrong. Okay. So I'm just and and trust me, until 2001, 